Uh, how did you experience uh, a 121 loss big league season from afar? Did it did it uh, make you feel anything? Did did it bum you out at all, or make you feel you know bad that you couldn't be there trying to trying to mm-hmm. trying to help or anything like that? Uh, I mean, yeah. Just because, too, I know all the guys up there, you know. So I saw, I knew a lot of the guys up there, and it's not like you feel bad for them. You just know that they wanted to win too, you know. They they want to do the best. They want the their club to win. They want they want to do all, you know. They all, they want to do all that stuff. So, um, yeah, it was very heartbreaking and things like that, and upsetting to to notice all that. But also at the same time, it's just like, all right, we just got punched in the mouth. You know, what are we gonna do about it next? You know. So I think that kind of gives us a little motivation little added motivation to turn things around, you know, so, uh, I mean, we're getting a lot of really good pieces with coaching staff, and um, we have a lot of really good pieces and players, too, so I just feel like it's a collective group of things that need to start clicking, and, and uh, I feel like sooner or later it'll, it'll come around, so, I mean, from from my end, yeah, it, it really sucked to see all that stuff, and, um, you know, and I feel like now everyone, they just think that that's what you have on your forehead is is that loss of the season on you and things like that. But uh, okay, you you want to have that on my head? All right, let's let's show you different. You know, let's show us what what, what you can be and what, what what we can do next. So I feel like it's a lot of motivation. So did you well, kind of feel? Sorry, can I, <coughs> did you did you kind of feel you know part of it? Um, did you feel connected to it? And how do you think you would have been at going through something like that just temperamentally um, mm-hmm. throughout the season? Yeah, I mean, 100%. I feel, I, I, I feel like I feel what, what they felt just because we're, we're a group, you know, we're a collective group as, as an organization. And so um, I felt like everybody felt the same thing. Um, obviously, the guys up there probably felt a little little more upsetting and disappointed about it, but we all felt disappointed and, and upset. So, um, I mean, at the end of the day, it just shows that we care, too, you know. So it cares that we, we want to do good. We want, we want this organization to succeed. And... Uh, um, I wish I could have been up there to maybe help and things like that, but there's a reason why I wasn't up there. So uh, I just felt like when the time's right, it's going to happen. So uh, uh, I would say just God's time. So what were you talking about? You know, you wish you were there. Obviously, ultimate goals, you know, to get to the big leagues. But you mm-hmm. talked about, I mean, you used the word failure a few times in this Zoom here, and are you almost in, in a weird way like? happy that call didn't come, that you didn't have the kind of that bad taste in your mouth, the excitement of the big leagues, maybe a little bit of like rough spot when you get to get here in September and then you don't play the fall league. Instead, you do go to the fall league. You get kind of that upswing and you take that into your off season kind of with a clean slate. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Um, I don't know if I've been asked that yet, but uh, like I always say is just you never um, – let me, how, how am I going to phrase this? I just feel like, in my life, I feel like everything's worked out the way it's supposed to, and the timing has worked out the way it's supposed to, and um, this year, I definitely felt like I was forcing myself to try and be where I wasn't at, and not be where my feet were, um, and I feel like that was one of the main reasons why I wasn't able to catch my stride, is because I was always looking into the big leagues, and Seeing that and say, oh, I can, I can help out. I can, I want to be up there to do whatever I can. But at the same time, when I was doing that, I wasn't helping myself of where I was at in the time being, getting ready for that day and ready for that game. So uh, I just feel like there, it was a lot of emotions. Um, yes, I want to be up there. You want to be in the big leagues and you want to be the best. But at the same time, yes, I was happy I wasn't up there because I learned a lot about myself and I learned a lot about what I needed to do do to get better as a baseball player and, and be the best version I can be as a baseball player. So there's a lot of mix, mixed emotions, you know. So I want to be up there and help. But at the same time, I have, I'm happy I wasn't up there because I learned from what I needed to learn from being in AAA and going to meet with uh, the new hitting director, uh, Brian Fuller, yet. But, you know, something he's talked about is kind of being coordinated in the White Sox plan and also your uh, your hitting group's plan. How do you, you felt like that's been coordinated so far with – Obviously, Bledsoe having a lot of resources for you, but also try to make sure it's in line with what you're doing with the White Sox. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't talked much with them, uh, with the new guy yet, but uh, I had a pretty good relationship with some of the other guys with the White Sox, um, with our all of the hitting coaches throughout the levels, and uh, we're all pretty much on the same page with everything. So, uh, like I said, we were on that Zoom call back in late August, I think, and I mean we've just been kind of building off of that and uh, learning from what from what the game teaches me pretty much, you know, because that's the best teacher is the game. So uh, that's pretty much the only thing we've been working on is just um, whatever happens during the game, just build off that and uh, think just little things to critique because you can always get better. Great athletes uh, envision success and what it looks like before it happens. If I asked you to envision your 2025 season, and what would that look like in your mind right now? Uh, I would say it's just – the White Sox, uh, I mean, having a really good season and uh, just turning the page and hoping everybody just forgets about the season that we just had. And uh, I would say that's probably one of the biggest things is I don't want to look at the individual goals because once I notice that I focus on winning and just winning the game, individual stats take care of themselves. So just with my experience with that, I feel like that's the best thing. So um I just, hope, I just hope that we have a really good year and um, it's kind of like we put the year that we just had in the rear view mirror and, uh, and I would hope that we have a very productive and successful season. So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of individual goals that I want to accomplish, but at the same time, I just want to win and I just want to help this organization be as best as we can. And I feel like if, if I put that first, that everything will take care of itself. Simply put, do you envision yourself playing shortstop for the Chicago White Sox every day in 2025? Yes, I, I do envision myself doing that, yeah. What has been conveyed to you thus far about the plans for you for this upcoming season? Can you say that again? What has been, you have been told about the plans for you and your role with this team for this upcoming season? <laughs> so, uh... I actually have a call with them on Thursday, and we're going to talk about all that stuff. But at the end of the year, um, all the coaches, we sat together, and we kind of went over um, what I need to improve on and what, what I need to do just continue to keep getting better, like some of the infield coordinators and things like that. And um, they were pretty pleased and happy with how I, how I played defensively throughout the year, and I was really happy about it well because I felt like I played the best that I um, – I, I ever have at shortstop, so it was pretty. It was pretty cool to just um, play a full season and be healthy, pretty much. So that's the number one goal: is just be healthy and be able to play every single day. And uh, I think the biggest thing they just said is just continuing to grow as a player and gain wisdom from other big leaguers and um, just keep maturing as a player. So what have you? What will you do differently from here out into spring training to make sure you're ready? I mean, I'm going to train my butt off. You know, I'm going to push myself. And uh, the biggest thing is every single day our guy, he walks in and he says, you ready to dominate the day. So, you know, I'm not trying to win the day. I'm trying to dominate the day. So I come in here trying to dominate my workout, dominate my hitting routines, and dominate my infielding routines. So uh, I feel like that's the biggest thing is is I come in here and, and Hunter Bud, so that's his name. He comes in he's like, you say, you're ready to dominate. So I, I saw a thing off. Also, that there's people that try to win, that just try to tra train to win, but when you train to dominate, it kind of changes a little mindset. So I feel like that's kind of clicking with me right now, so I feel like that's what I'm trying to do. But obviously, you've been asked a lot about hitting this season, but you talk very positively about your, your defense. Just what are the big strides you feel like you've made that maybe, mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously you've been confident the whole time you can be a major league shortstop, but what's really kind of seem like it's taken a step forward to make it even more uh, realistic now. Yeah, I just think the biggest thing was I, I kind of I improved my internal clock a lot, and I felt like I um, I was locked in the whole time when I was playing shortstop, and I was and I was always thinking of if the ball hits me, where am I going? You know, and things like that. Not waiting of, oh, if the ball hits me, well, what do I got to do? No, I was already ahead of it. And uh, I feel like that was one of the biggest things is I was, I was just, I was thinking in the moment, but at the same time, I was thinking ahead of time, where I was going with the ball, what do I got to do, and things like that. Um, so I feel like that was one of the biggest things that kind of changed my mindset, and I was just 
I was I was thinking the ball was going to hit me every single time, and I was going to do whatever I could to keep the ball in the infield and do whatever I can to help my pitchers out. Uh, yeah, Cole, so just a quick one on research and development. How much uh, do the White Sox, you know, insist that uh, young players like yourself get involved with uh, numbers and looking at metrics and, uh, you know, does – does that, is that something that you've had to learn to incorporate or, you know, can you do that and just be Colson Montgomery, the baseball player all the time that you've always been growing up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, I feel like that just comes with the, the day and age that we're in is everything's turning into the whole numbers and things like that. Um, I think what the White Sox are good is that if you want it, you can have it, but if you don't want it, then then they'll just leave you be of what you need to do. So uh, there's times this year that I, I've wanted it and just to see some things, but then I don't want to – I'm more of a feel guy, so I don't really want to look at all those numbers and things like that because I feel like if I'm, I'm moving the right way and I feel the right way, then those numbers are going to show up the way they need to. So uh, there's times where I want to see it, but then there's times where I don't even want to look at it at all. So – I think the White Sox are good with it, where they just, if you want it, you can have it, but they're not going to push you with it. Thank you. CSLPG, Chicago Southland Postgrad School of Baseball, is looking for baseball players. Postgrad baseball allows you to show coaches that you are ready to play on the college level. You have five years to play four years of college baseball. The clock starts running as soon as you enter college, on the team or not. As a member of our post-grad program, you lose no college playing eligibility as opposed to going to a junior college or a four-year university and sitting on the bench and not getting playing time while you are losing playing eligibility. Post-grad offers an additional year of baseball preparation after high school graduation for those who have gone overlooked or under the radar by college coaches and or major league scouts. Fall season, September through October, 30, 45 plus game schedule local, national, and international unsigned baseball players who have baseball ability and desire to play college or professional baseball. One can benefit from this post-grad program in many ways, 